surprise, fun, warmth. These are the attributes which describe a Kirby game as listed by the developers. Kirby, of course, is a short, round, baby-voiced bundle of joy whose accompanying soundtrack is friendly, upbeat, and colorful. And I'm going to take that soundtrack and make it so f***ing heavy metal. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Day and I make music. Look, I think we often forget that behind that innocent smile, Kirby is an overpowered celestial being who kills gods. Kirby is the Kratos of positivity, the doomslayer of optimism, if you will. And I don't think that we can fully appreciate the level of sheer destructive power that Kirby possesses without a substantial audio makeover. So my plan is to take the music from Kirby and turn up the intensity so high that you'll finally understand why Kirby and Doomguy are cut from the same cloth. What a perfect opportunity for a Venn diagram. So starting with things that are different, recent Kirby music sounds like this. And recent Doom music sounds like this. Kirby is about eight inches tall, which is very short, and uh, was born from the overwhelming positive emotions of a celestial being. On the other hand, Doomguy is almost seven feet tall and channels his rage to fight an endless army of demons. So far, quite different, yeah but let's talk about all the things they have in common. Both Kirby and Doomguy, against all odds, are the sole survivors of a cataclysmic event. Doomguy survived the invasion by hell, and Kirby survived the opening moments of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Adventure Mode, among other things. Both Kirby and Doomguy went on a solo mission to topple godlike beings. They both have slain thousands of enemies. They are constantly besting boss enemies many times their size. They use a variety of blades and projectiles weapons, they both have chased foes between multiple dimensions, neither one of them take fall damage, and both of them barely speak any words at all. So considering what the soundtracks of each side sound like, let's listen again. And considering the attributes in the middle, I think it's in our best interest, no, even better, I think it's our duty to take the most important parts of each kind of music and make this crossover theme a reality. I think the new Forgotten Lands soundtrack has a lot of good examples on the Kirby side, so I'm gonna pull that up, and in the meantime, check out this song made by one of my patrons. channeling my world-destroying happiness. You know, it's funny, the last full Kirby game I played was Kirby and the Crystal Shards on N64, way, way back when I was just a baby plays guitar. So I really didn't know what I was going to find when I started this exploration, but in just about every Kirby soundtrack, there are a million genres. The composer Jun Ishikawa, among others, has been making songs and sound effects for Kirby games at the still-standing HAL Laboratory since the franchise inception in 1993. And they didn't let hardware limitations stop them from writing songs in the style of Classical music? Power metal? And even polka. So nowadays, because game consoles can play high-definition audio, it's not surprising that the Forgotten Land soundtrack fully realizes these genres as they were meant to be heard. I don't know if you've listened already, but there are actually tons of guitars in this soundtrack. The one thing I'll say, though, is the most heavy metal they managed to get in the Forgotten Land soundtrack is more of an upbeat, jazzy, funky fusion sound. Not that there haven't been metal versions of Kirby songs in the past. So maybe that's the best place to start. What does jazz fusion, for lack of a better thing to call it, what does that have that the composers believe works best for a Kirby soundtrack as opposed to going full on heavy metal? Mm, if I had to guess, it probably has something to do with those attributes I listed earlier. That is surprise, fun, and warmth. 
I bet that the jazzy instrument choice like congas, a horn section, and a tone wheel organ, and the unpredictable arrangement involving complex melodies and polyrhythms result in a sense of playfulness and fun. You know what soundtracks are neither playful nor fun? In fact, even the old school Doom soundtracks make you want to scrunch your face and throw the horns in the air. When I listen to songs from Doom Eternal, the groove goes so hard that I'm at risk of breaking my own neck. Groove, 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 groove. I think we're onto something. Let me try something real quick. Okay, here's a section of that pretty well-known Kirby song, Gourmet Race, which I mapped out with some wonky keyboard sounds. <laughs> If I remove the melody and just leave the rhythm section, essentially what we're left with is the groove of the song. Okay, new example. Here's the Dragon Force-esque power metal version of the same song from Super Smash Bros. Brawl, which I recreated super quick. And once again, without the melody. Okay, now let's think about this like it's Doom Eternal. From what we know about the soundtracks, there are typically two structures we can copy. The first one to try is to make the rhythm section play a halftime groove, and then have a lead synthesizer play the melody over the top. But alternatively, in what I can only describe as a big brain move, we can also drop the synth melody completely and then incorporate that into the rhythm section so it plays both the melody and the groove at the same time. That beat is locked in so hard, I think it's safe to say that what we created is a... It's kind of obvious when you hear it in an audio example, but the melody locked into a groovy rhythm is a gigantic component of what makes catchy guitar riffs so, well, uh, catchy. You know, actually, I think I know how I want to construct this cover, but first I'm gonna play some more riffs. I'll be back in a second. Let me remind you that this song is not done until you can imagine Kirby decapitating Waddle Dee's with a smile on his face, okay? So take a look at this. I'm trying this weird thing where I play both a synth and a guitar into the guitar ramp at the same time, and the result is kind of the best of both worlds. <laughs> If you take nothing else away from this video, I hope you at least start sending weird stuff into your guitar amplifier besides your actual guitar. At this point, I've laid out lots of grooves, and if we take a look at Kina's photo here, I think we've solved the blood part, definitely this chopping part, but I need something special to give us the big smile part. Hmm, I have an idea. There is nothing happier, or that creates a better dichotomy, than those old school keyboard patches. You know, I think we can all agree that without any effects on it, it sounds a little bit out of place, but I have a plan. Wait, have I shown you this plugin? I'm so excited because I can finally use it. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to Dumpster Fire. I'm not sure what you expected it to sound like, but it probably wasn't that. If you want to download it for yourself, there's a link in the video description. Not sponsored. I think it would sound awesome to have a high guitar lead ripping that melody in Gourmet Race. Uh, yeah, f it, why not? I'm surprised he wants that, because he knows I'm rusty. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this cover is mixed and mastered and ready for showtime. And if it's not worthy of the little pink god emperor, I will happily be sucked into his mouth and absorbed into the void while my traits are assimilated into his being. Gotta stay positive. Without further ado, the happiest, most aggressive version of Gourmet Race I could manage. Enjoy.
Was this song surprising, fun, and warm enough for you? Let me know in the comments below. This video was brought to you in part by my wonderful patrons, the names of which you can see rolling on the screen right now. They are wonderful and nice, and I love them very much. This song will be uploaded to Spotify, Apple Music, Bandcamp, and everything else. You can download it for free or stream it or buy it for whatever price you think is best. Go check out the links in the pinned comment below for everything, and I update them as soon as this song is released on each platform since things like Spotify can take a while. And this video wouldn't be complete without a shout out to Kina, the amazing amazing artist who made the thumbnail art. You can see more of her work on her social media, and I made it easy by putting a link in the video description. I have a massive collab on the horizon and more originals to try, but until then, I've been Jeffrey Day. You've been Poyo. And I hope you come back to check out the next video. See ya!